A large model showman's engine, part 18, completing the repair of the stub axle on the right hand side front wheel. A while ago a very good friend of mine who makes model aircraft engines gave me some really good metal. All I know is that it is cast iron but it's of a cast iron type I've never used before. It's very fine grained and when you turn it the chippings are almost black. And the good news is it's exactly the right diameter that I need to make a replacement collar just like the one on screen which is going to be scrap very shortly. This is a very simple job, well it is if you know what you're doing. I'm going to live with the outside diameter at one and a half inches. So okay, because it's in the three jaw chuck it's not going to be 100% perfectly concentric with the board hole in the centre, but that is of no consequence. The main thing is the hole in the centre has to be accurate, I've shortened this sequence considerably. This part of the sequence is running in real time, but the previous clip showing the boring operation was running at 400%. As you can clearly see, the stub axle is a very good fit in the board hole. Now I need to machine the recess, and I'm just checking the dimensions with the caliper. It's unimportant to know what the dimension is, as long as I duplicate it with the caliper against the new part. When I was much younger, in fact when I was at school, I had a real problem with maths. And all these years later, I still have a problem with maths. I'm okay with words, but numbers can be a bit of a problem. I would assume that a lot of people watching these videos will also have a similar problem with numbers. When I was young, I went to quite a good school. It wasn't a private school, it was just a state school, and I had quite a good education. And I always remember the reaction from both of my parents to my final two math reports. The penultimate one said, out of his depth and sinking. And the final one was just wonderful. The comment was, further critical comment would be futile. In fact, when I sat the exam, which in those days was an O-level exam, I just drew a really nice picture of a BSA 650cc motorcycle across the maths paper. But over the years, with practicing the use of maths in a practical application, there has been a significant improvement in my understanding of numbers. You've just been watching me part off the component in real time. I didn't speed this clip up. And here's the collar in its embryonic form. There's a bit more to do at it yet. I need to know where this collar needs to sit on the stub axle in the finished job. And the best way to do that is to fit it to the wheel and have a look at it. Can you see the small amount of stub axle sticking out? I put the stub axle back in the chuck and chamfered the edge. And while I was at it, I put the collar back in the chuck and using a lathe tool, I scribed two lines on it so I know where the centre is. The lathe tool, as usual, was set to centre height, so these two marks are very accurate. Over now to the drilling machine to drill a hole all the way through the centre. For this job to be really accurate, what I should have done is use my rotary table set on its side, horizontally, and then by using wigglers and wobblers and things like that to find the centre position accurately so that the hole in the collar was 100% accurate. I used an alternative method, perfect for someone like me who still thinks that pi is edible and isn't exactly 22 over 7 anyway. I just stood back and sighted up the drill with the line, shutting each of my eyes in turn and then opening them both to check that it was exactly in the centre. And as you've just seen, I centre drilled the part first, followed by going through with a 9 32nds of an inch twist drill. It's very important not to go all the way through and start drilling the bottom bit because it will be out of line. This is the way I do it, I've fitted the stub axle in place. No Loctite or anything, it's just a nice push fit into the hole. Now I can drill all the way through. The hole that I've originally drilled acts as a guide. I then drill through the centre of the stub axle and then right down to the other side of the ring until it comes out right at the bottom and drills a hole in my machine vise. Note to self, put some packing under the part next time. Although in this case it's a bit late for this machine vise, it's a crappy thing anyway, I've had it for many many years and if you look at it closely it's had a lot of abuse, some accidental and some intentional. So how has my calibrated eye worked this time? Well I think it's going to be okay. This is not a setup, this is literally the first fitting of the pin through the ring and the stub axle. The pin is a firm push fit in the hole and here you see the principle. The slot that I've milled on the top that I didn't video because I forgot to press record is a recess that the top of the pin fits into. The pin is slightly too long so I'm going to chop a bit of this off. When this stub axle is refitted to the main axle beam of the engine, the milled slot will be uppermost, 
so the pin has gravity on its side to hold it in place, but because it has this nice brass cap around it, it can't go anywhere. In this clip I'm illustrating the principle. The pin does not need hammering into the hole. It's just a firm push fit, and when I turn it upside down and shake it, it doesn't fall out. That's all very well, but does it work when I put it back on the wheel? Well, I think it's time to try it. And as you can clearly see, yes, it works in exactly the same way, and it's quite satisfying pushing this pin into this collar through the stub axle. When I shortened the pin, I think I shortened it just slightly too much, but then again, it's a good location if I want to take the pin out to put something in there to just tap the pin out. After refitting the stub axle to the axle beam, and tightening the allen head bolt that stops the thread from coming loose, first of all with the wheel in position I check the end float, and it's just a tiny bit, to make up for any expansion of the hub, and after a good application of grease, the repair is completed. Having a quick look at the wheel at the other side, I did notice that the stub axle in this side was a tiny bit loose. I will look into that in the next episode. But for now, as always, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.